Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Simber, VB, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Dave Meltzer joining us here. The new issue of The Observer is up on the front page, WrestlingObserver.com. Sign up today at WrestlingObserver.com. You can read this issue and uh, thousands of, and la- of and other last issues. Week, last week's issue on Vince McMahon. Yeah, last week's you can read Incredible. the history of Vince McMahon. 15,000 words that he wrote in a few days on the history of Vince McMahon. Yeah, and this was, a, this was the history of Ric Flair. Not quite the history, but a lot of behind-the-scenes stories on Ric Flair, yeah. That's right. And virtually every observer dating back to 1991 is available on the site. That's a lot of words. Do I need to do the math here? Like when you got inducted into the Cauliflower Alley Hall of Fame? It's probably more words than than any sports writer has ever written. Oh, it is for sure. In their lives. Yeah. There's there's no uh, there's no question. And more history written by one person maybe than yeah anybody else. Especially for somebody who's still active. Anyone in any sport for sure. Yeah. 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 I would estimate that there's fifty six million four hundred and twenty (laughs) thousand words on the history of wrestling. If you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's that's a that's a I, I use and 30, that's only on, and, and that's only on and that's only on uh, Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels. Uh, yeah, that's right. That's right. The actual number's higher. <laughs> but anyway, uh, in the new Obser- uh, Observer this week, you uh, had a lot about SummerSlam changes. We heard about the uh, word wrestling and wrestler no longer being banned. And uh, I was amused that you wrote. Uh, virtually everybody was was uh, excited about these changes. That means some people aren't. Are we talking like Kevin Dunn and uh, who? Oh who no, no, else there's, there's, there's there's wrestlers who are um, paranoid about their spot. Well, uh, sure, but I'm talking. But I mean, who, as far, who as far would as not the, like as, to be able to use the word wrestler? Yeah, I don't know that there's anyone. Um, I have not spoken to anyone or heard from anyone who was unhappy that the word wrestler and wrestling are back in the vocabulary. So, yeah, I, I can't imagine. I mean, those weird Vinceisms, you know, being gone. I mean, there's. I don't know that there's really an argument that that's not a, a good thing. So we've got uh, we got some changes. We got more coming here tonight, and uh, I guess what have you heard from from the wrestlers? I mean, you you wrote a little bit about the words and how it was a little more relaxed, and the women feel they're going to get a better opportunity. What else? Yeah, I read the, again, the whole show is going to be the women tonight. So there you go. I guess they are. I mean, that gauntlet's probably going to go an hour or close to it. You know, so um, which is something that they've never tried before. I don't think at at at, at that level. We've also got the uh, notes on Ric Flair's final match being uh, very, very successful, which suggests we're going to see more final matches from other people. Um, but who? I mean, like, I, it's funny because I was actually in contact with Conrad today, and, um, you know, I was, you know, just talking about the success, but it's kind of like, okay, what, you know, like, that's a big, you know, Ric Flair's retirement is a very unique thing, and the end of Jim Crockett Promotions in a in a weird way is a very unique thing. But, you know, what do you do that can be comparable? I mean, there isn't, it's not like this is some great idea that you can now start, a, you know, a, a yearly show or even around. Um, maybe, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they do a yearly show, but I don't, I don't see anything that would be able to generate this level of interest, even if you do a multi-promotional show, because this show was not sold on the idea that... Um, you know, you could see guys from all these promotions and you could see this great triple A match, even though you got that. This show was completely sold on the idea you were seeing Ric Flair's last match and they did the good video series to build it up, even if the match wasn't um, something that, you know, you might like. I know it was not something that I was happy seeing, but that's but it was it was a financial success at a pretty big level, actually. Well, well, I would not. Ta- uh, well, hold on one one quick thing. I would not advocate for this. Keep keep that in mind. I'm not advocating for. Oh, this. what Ric Flair wrestling again next year? No, 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 no. <laughs> but if you if you watch the show, there were some people there, and you know, it, I don't think it would be as big as Ric Flair's last match, but a Bret Hart's last match or a oh, Mick Foley's last match. But is there? I hope a, they don't do it either. Well, I hope is- Ric Flair didn't do it. He did. But is there any promotional legs to a retirement tour, and do you want to be known as that? He's had success being a convention promoter, you know, the first time around with podcasts, now with this. I mean, isn't his, to me, his best thing that he could do is just throw his anchor around the bigger weekends because he seems to have great relationships with both WWE and AEW, where if he just has a show where he wraps GCW and BLP and maybe some other groups, that to me would be his best bet because if you go the retirement route is that what you will really want to be known as it, that doesn't have legs to me well if you're What's making TV, a lot of money but, but i mean you could you, without rick you, flair but, but, but even 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 bret hart okay who would be the biggest name that you could probably do this with 
I don't think that Bret Hart would draw in that type of a situation anywhere close to Ric Flair. It's a completely different type of appeal. And also, I don't think Bret Hart would want to do it um, at this stage. I don't think, like, like I think Bret being there for Rick's last match, probably more, probably in more in his mind, probably would tell him, please don't do it. You know what I mean? Because he's, I don't think he wants to go out like that. How about we just do a series of last whatevers, like uh, Vince McMahon's last show. You can go and just like book an event, have a bunch of screw jobs, and call everyone oh. sports entertainers. Or you know. then he, then Conrad's got the uh, reputation for being the Grim Reaper. Then the, anything that he runs the last one, then then it's killed and in the ground. I don't know if you want that reputation to have, but I don't know. But it did well. It did. It did as 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 a promotion. I mean, as far as an independent show, it was the second most successful in the history of wrestling. You know, the biggest being All In. So, yeah, you know, I mean, history of wrestling goes back a long, long time. Indeed it does. Yes, Dave, I, I got to ask you this because you wrote about it in the newsletter, and there's been a lot of dark clouds that have passed over because of this whole Warner Brothers Discovery deal and, and their earnings report and all the ch changes that they've been making. But you write in the newsletter, Discovery programming is usually budgeted between 400 and 500 k per hour. Wrestling fits into that parameter because right now it's about roughly 321000 per hour. Is there maybe a silver lining in this with all the changes they'd like to make to possibly TBS and TNT where they have lower programming cross across the board, yet AEW could still get a tiny increase because it is fitting into oh, well, what I they mean, want? I, I, I would think that they should get an increase. I mean, I'm not saying no increase at all, but I mean, the the idea that people had talked about, you know, I mean, like, like again, like Raw is $1,921,000 an hour and they're 323 and their ratings now are you know three quarters of raw in the demo you know i mean um and and, it, and they were neck and neck um you know at this time last year so um you know the gap is definitely widened but it's like they're not going to get like if they get 50 percent of raw they're not i don't think they'll get that because that would be um oh god you know that that would be over you know well over 100 million a year um, and it's viable before the merger. I would think it was actually a pretty good shot. They would get over a hundred million a year now I'm not so sure um, There's so many different things in play. I mean, it's like, you know, because there's there's also the talk, you know, they could add more shows um, And you know, obviously we know there's a reality show coming um, There's always ideas of other programming um, So there's ways to work. There's so many different ways to work deals and also, you know, I mean the one thing that that when I was studying this thing is that is the thing that hit me was how valuable they would be to ESPN in the same manner that UFC is, and with this with the success that ESPN has had with UFC on pay per view, um, there's nobody else, literally, there's nobody else out there because WWE is ran from pay per view that they could have. You know, they would not have anywhere close to UFC success, but they would have multi millions, tens of millions, every year um, if they made a deal with. Um, with AEW to purchase their pay-per-view rights like they did with the uh, UFC. But for AEW, then that would put them entirely in the ESPN umbrella. And wouldn't you have the bad risk of being lost in that mix where there's so much on ESPN, whereas Discovery, from how it looks, if they're turning if they're turning TNT into USA, they're going to need an anchor. And considering that Ray, uh, Dynamite's num the number one show, one of the number one shows on cable, like they're going to need an anchor for all these other cheaper reality shows in some ways, even if they don't get what they want monetarily, is that stability better than going to an ESPN where you might just get lost in the mix with every other property they have? That's a really good point. And I used to argue that um, years ago when, when, um, UFC was on spike and everybody was like, oh, you know, it should be on ESPN and we and, and Joe Silva and I both said on spike You know, we we can do you know, we're the Kings on ESPN. We're just another property But now the way things have matured I think UFC is is way better off on ESPN than it would be on spike even though they are just another property just because of the nature of how much money ESPN can afford to pay them so um yeah, there's there's definitely two ways of looking at it, but I think but they're, um, well, they're not going to be the kings on TNT because you've got the NBA. 
Uh, but they, but they are. Aside from the NBA, they're well. Well, they're not they're, on TNT. That's the for the Friday night show anyway. Which or is, TBS, yeah, yeah. yeah but yeah. And the thing is, Discovery t- can but, pimp. Discovery but, can pimp the AAW where they can't really do anything other than the NBA than to have that property on that night. That's the one thing. At least with AEW, you're able to have it on Discovery Plus or whatever you, in theory, would want to do with it. Yes, absolutely. I mean, like I said, there's ways to work out deals, and it's also there should be. Other suitors, you know, like whether it be Showtime, whether it be, um, you know, whether it would be ESPN, whether it would be somebody else. I mean, um, that and that would be the key to the rights increase. If other people want you and bid up, then Discovery would need to pay to keep you. If nobody else bids for it, um, you know, that would be then they would get a better deal. So, I mean, that's really really the key is multiple suitors more than anything else as far as, you know, what happens to AEW with the next television rights deal. All right, we're going to uh, wrap it up. Thanks for the uh, segment here, Dave. As noted, the new Observer is up on the front page. If you want to read more about this, WrestlingObserver.com is the place to go. You can read the uh, the new Observers, the back issues of the Observers, and, of course, all of the podcasts as well. 13,000 archived podcasts, WrestlingObserver.com. This was the best thing on the show, and uh, the show is all downhill from there. So uh, I guess I can continue on to... Uh, Dana Brooke beat Becky Lynch. Did I really see this? And that, my friends, is Monday Night Raw. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, the Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.